So first, null search has created a really big hype topic. So over the past few years, we, we saw like quite a big steep in interest in search, in neural search, which means to use transformer networks, large language networks to improve search results. And um, an example I show here is like the following. So you take the simple English Wikipedia, just because it's like fewer documents than the full English Wikipedia. And you ask a really simple question, what's the capital of the United States? And if you do this with Elasticsearch, Mexico search, BM25, you get the following three results. So the first is about capital punishment because the article about capital punishment contains quite often the word capital and the word United States. Second entry is about Ohio because Ohio is a state in the United States and it has capital. And the third entry is about Nevada because it's also a state in the United States and it has capital. Uh, so from a lexical match, these entries maybe make sense, but from a user perspective, they are really bad. And pretty much every search function, except for maybe Google, Bing, and so on, like really few, are really, really disappointing. So there's like not really any search function I really like. So if I go, if I want to find something on Twitter, I often go on Google and search on Google. Uh, for the, the tweets I'm looking for, because search function on Twitter works quite poorly. But luckily now we see a lot of progress in normal search so that everyone can get like search results, which are extremely good. So if you take like a really simple out of the box normal search approach, do the same question, what's the capital of the United States? You get on the first entry the document you, you're looking for. Washington DC is the capital of the United States. Perfect, that's what I wanted to know. Um, now, finally, I have a search function that works and which is not Google, uh, which is really great if you want to do search on some internal documentation. Obviously, Google works for web documents, but I can't use Google to search for my presentation, Word documents, emails, and so on. So here it's great that you finally can have these extremely powerful search function on your internal data. And One comment while on that slide, uh, Niels. So when you say lexical search, that's mainly matching keywords, like the keywords in the query and the key keywords in the document. Is there more to it? Yeah. So so that's pretty much matching the words. Um, then BM25 does a bit more smart matching. Um, so it kind of computes like term frequency and inverse document frequency. So it knows that capital and United States are more relevant than the word the. So it ranks documents with the word capital and United States or United and States, these are independent words higher in the results. So that's why we see capital punishment on the top result because it has the word capital and United States quite often. These words are infrequent. So BM25 thinks these, these are the relevant hits I want to see. Awesome, clear, thank you. So one technique which is really popular um, in most search is so-called dense bi-encoders. Here, the idea is you take the document like the query, you pass it through a transformer network like BERT, BERT gives you contextualized word embeddings, and then you do a pooling operation. For example, you take the mean of all BERT, of all contextualized word embeddings, and this gives you like a fixed size 784 dimensional vector. And then you can search in this. And dense by encoders, they can overcome many problems in lexical search. First, it can overcome the lexical gap. So in lexical search, if I search for what's the capital of the United States and the article talks about US or USA, it will not have a match between these. Also, lexical search does not respect the word order. So if I search Weezer, how to get Weezer from Germany to Canada, or the opposite, how do I get as Canadian or Weezer to Germany, um, cannot differentiate between these two. And lexical search obviously also doesn't know about related terms. So if I search for Spearman correlation in NumPy, but sadly there is no such function in NumPy, um, 
So, so these dense embedding approaches, they instead can find a entry about how to compute the Spearman collation in SciPy because it has learned that SciPy and NumPy are really similar frameworks. Both can be used in Python. They are easily interchangeable. So it can show you the results, even if your search query is not really perfect. And lexical search would just say, hey, there's no Spearman collation in NumPy, which is not super helpful. So to, to be really quick, so how to train them. So I could spend like a whole lecture how to train them. Um, you can also find on my YouTube channel a lot of talks where I go more deeper into it. But the idea in general is to you have certain pairs, certain positive pairs like A1, P1, A2, P2, and so on. And what these pairs are really depends on your use case. And I will show later an extremely cool application we recently published in terms of classification. So in search, what you often use is you have query answer passages. So what's the capital of the United States? Washington DC is the capital of the United States. Or maybe you have like some online community, let's say Stack Overflow, and you want to find duplicate questions. So you can say this is a question and that's another duplicate question. Or you work in on scientific papers and you say, okay, the paper title and the, another, the, the cited paper title. So one paper cites another, they should be are or likely are equivalent on, um, on the same topic. So they should also be close in the vector space. And then you train them to push these positive pairs close together. So you say, for example, A1 and P1, that's a query and an answer. These two points should be close in the vector space and all other points should be distant in the vector space. And then you can train this uh, on a lot of data as big as you want. And then you learn these nice vector spaces where the model learns that uh, NumPy and SciPy are similar in meaning. And so you can find related concepts. 